Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Um, all right, biggest loser from Feast Week. Can I go first on this one, guys? Yeah. Arkansas. I'm worried about Yeah, the, 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 if nothing else, the loss of Tremont Mark at the end of the game. Yeah. So one, you lose the guy that had kind of turned into, and it doesn't sound like it's something serious, right? Like the the reports coming out of there, it didn't look that that was kind of a strange thing because it didn't look it looked like he got a stinger, landed on his left side, and he was scared to move it. And I've gotten those; they hurt. But yes. I, I, the fact that they carted him off, I was like, man, he must have just had a freak accident. It didn't look bad. That was a weird thing about it. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. I, I interrupted. No, no, I, it doesn't. It it looks. He landed right for the people that didn't see. He kind of went up in the air. He got taken out um, off balance and basically landed like right on his lower back, flat on his back from pretty yeah, high on his left air. hip. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it, he got carted off. It it seemed like it was something that was going to be serious. He went to the hospital. He was released. I haven't seen an update in a couple of days from them, but um, hopefully he'll be back soon because they need him. He had thirty four points against North Carolina on like thirteen for seventeen shooting. But yeah, he was the awesome. go-to guy. And Caleb Battle was like the other guy, and he hasn't really been that efficient. And Devo Davis doesn't look like he's taken the step forward that we thought he would. And uh Trevon Brazil is, you know, was hasn't been scoring the ball well. It looks like he's still coming off the ACL. I thought that, that team would be better a little bit quicker. They are not quite there. That's kind of their deal, though. Yeah, they figure things like Musk puts these people together and figures it out in December and January. And once he has it in February and March and they make their run. So they, they, they still have the upside, but I, I was, I was less impressed than I thought I would be heading into that event. Yeah. They're, they're a loser, but it's the team that lost to them. That's the biggest loser. Stanford. I mean, Stanford placed last in the, in the battle for Atlantis. It's, it's not a secret that Jared Haas is uh, firmly on the hot seat. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think like they care to, enough. I don't like to – yeah, it's it's going to be time for a change there. The Cardinal are going to make a change after this season. They, they're they entering – it's also the right time to make a change because you're entering a new conference. Agreed. So you, you got to change things up. You're three and four. First off, you, you should have beat Arkansas. They had the game one. Yeah. They had that game one. They were up by four in the final minute of regulation. But then they realized they were Stanford and peed down their leg. <laughs> I mean, that was just a joke of a of a close to regulation by the Cardinal. You got to be better. I mean, I'm just I was watching the game. All right, and Arkansas had no business winning that game. And you guys are right. Like I have concerns about Arkansas. I think that they'll be that they'll figure it out. But they were playing individual individualistic basketball uh, in Atlantis. It was a lot of let me take you one on one. There was and sometimes that works, and they play that sometimes, but it wasn't working. But then. You followed up, you lose to Michigan, okay, who might be the most confusing team in the sport. But then you come back, you play Northern Iowa, and you lost by 22. You lost, you got ran, or you were, you, I hope, I hope Stanford players that you played at the tables. Because that was the they only did. Hey, I bet you they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? Good. You lost by twenty-two in fitting fashion because that's a bust. Yeah, and they're Stanford it's guys. So they probably they pro the the reason they were probably out late is because they probably won counting cards. They're Stanford guys. Yeah. They're smart enough. Well, uh, my other it, they shot five for twenty-six from three, and Jared Bynum just wasn't good enough. Providence transfer he just hasn't been good enough for them. Yeah, uh, and they nailed my other biggest loser, Fanta, which was which was well me for being all in on. Michigan after they won three games against uh basically I don't blame you I don't blame you though like I can't blame you for that I because... blame myself I you know what I blame myself I fell into the trap all they need now is Jawan yeah. Howard to come back and save the day I liked it I liked it they they ran they absolutely obliterated St. John's in the garden yeah and when you watch that you're like St. John's is crap they're crap. And then St. John's went back. They it took two or three. They just, you know, they won by 46 the other day. Like they look that they're, they're getting better every day. But yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, who else is disappointing. I know they're shorthanded, but West Virginia has been disappointing. They, they went 0 for 2 down in Fort Myers. Disappointment for, hey, you know who else I was disappointed by? Honestly, T.O., I was dis I thought Virginia would play better. That's where I was going. That's where that I was, was going. Virginia. Take it away, T.O. Talk to us what about you. No, what that was that. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, 
Use the bonus code FIELD200 and you will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly when placing your first wager of at least $10 with BetMGM. Here's what you got to do. Download the BetMGM app. Sign up using the bonus code FIELD200. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game regardless of sport. You will receive $200 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. Just make sure that you use the bonus code FIELD200 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available under one wallet in select states. As a New Jersey resident, this is super convenient for me when I have to go cover games in New York or Philly. When across the state borders, just log into your existing account instead of having to create new accounts in each state that you go to. And most importantly, I got to let you know, we do have some fun stuff coming up for this college basketball season. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops odds boosts, my personal favorite, parlay odds boosts. So download the BetMGM app today. That, that's where I'm at. I, I was going to say Virginia as well. I said them last night on the Bayheim cast that uh, if you were able to <laughs> check it out, it was fun. It was great. He told some stories. We got him going. Uh, now, I think Virginia just simply because like, you know, you, you lay an egg against a Wisconsin team that's like-minded in their approach. And then in your rebound game down in Fort Myers, you play a West Virginia team that's so shorthanded, it's insane. They've gone through all kinds of stuff in the offseason. And you're being looked at to be one of these guys or one of these teams to kind of keep the ACC's metrics afloat. You can't lose by 20-something points to Wisconsin. And Wisconsin's not even playing with Connor Asijian, who's in a tiff with his coach or whatever's going on over there. I have no idea what's going on over there. I don't know if it's a tiff. I don't know what's going on. So let me just clear that up. But uh, it's that to me was disappointing because those metrics struggle whenever uh, you, you know you don't beat the teams you're supposed to. And West Virginia only beating them by two is not a good look. And look, Virginia is not a team. That style is not a team to where you're going to be able to, one, run away from teams, and two, you're not going to be able to come back from a deficit because it's hard uh, playing at that pace, and you have to get out of what you do in order to catch back up. So you have to play well from the jump if you're Virginia, and that leaves you susceptible. And you play Wisconsin on a neutral side, and you get your doors blown off, and then you play West Virginia, who's not nearly as talented as you are, and you only win by two. Are, are Virginia's the biggest loser in my part. It, that's, are, are, they're the biggest ones in my part. Is, is that fixable? Like, can can they come back? Like, I just, I just, my question is, do they just have like a bad couple days or is this kind of who they are? Oh, well, I, I think the answer to that question might be next Wednesday, the 29th, or this Wednesday, the 29th. They play Texas A&M at home. Can you kind of regroup and get your win? Because after that, you know, it gets pretty easy up until December 19th. They play Syracuse at home, which... I, by the way, I'm surprised at how quick Syracuse has picked up pretty solid man principles. They're not there yet. They're still figuring it out under red, but surprise there. Uh, Texas A&M, though, that's going to be a monster test for them. I'm interested to see how that happens. In the first field of 68 tip-off, three of the preeminent mid-major programs in the country, three of the best coaches, November 30th, Liberty versus FAU, December 1st, Liberty versus Charleston, December 2nd, Charleston versus FAU, Three up-and-coming programs come together in a very, very creative entity. There's a reason we're called the Field of 68, right? We want to cover all of college basketball. We are calling it the Field of 68 tip-off.